Everyday life brings an endless stream of information. We're only aware of a tiny bit of the action. Even the exact same picture or the same sound, sometimes we'll perceive it and sometimes we don't. Why is that? What determines if something in the outside world makes it into our conscious awareness? We thought that neuromodulation may be important, and in particular, noradrenaline, which affects sensory pathways and behavior. Noradrenaline is involved in orienting towards behaviorally relevant stimuli and is low during sleep when we rarely perceive what's happening around us. So, is noradrenaline maybe an enabling factor in sensory perception? Our approach was to pharmacologically manipulate noradrenergic signaling in healthy human volunteers. We predicted that reducing noradrenaline, even at moderate and safe doses, should impair perception and sensory evoked activity, while boosting it should improve perception and associated activity. Subjects participated in three different sessions, conducted a week apart, and received either a drug that lowers noradrenaline, clonidine, a drug that enhances noradrenaline signaling, reboxetine, or placebo. The design was double-blind, and the order of drugs was balanced across individuals. Subjects performed visual tasks before and after taking these drugs, trying to detect weak stimuli or make basic discriminations. We collected behavioral measures of visual perception as well as EEG and bold fMRI data. We verified that the drugs were effective by testing their effects on pupil diameter and blood pressure. But did the drugs affect perception and sensory responses? Turns out that they did. Performance on the visual tasks followed our predictions. The more noradrenaline you have, the better you are in detecting a threshold stimulus, in discriminating between threshold stimuli, and also subjectively you feel that the image is more visible. The effects of the drugs were specific to perception. We did not see effects on decision-making or attention aspects of performance. To find out if these perceptual changes are associated with changes in visual responses, we measured high-density EEG, focusing on occipital electrodes over the visual cortex. We quantified the response with intertrial phase coherence, or ITPC, which is a sensitive measure that could capture the EEG responses to the weak stimuli we used at the individual subject level. Here as well, we found that the more noradrenaline, the higher the ITPC. In addition, the ITPC measure was correlated with the behavioral changes. Finally, to better understand which brain regions are affected by noradrenaline during visual perception, we ran an fMRI experiment with the same drugs, this time presenting object images. We found that for the weak stimuli, the drug effects were highly localized to high-level visual cortex beyond retinotopic regions. Overall, our study showed that noradrenaline influences visual perception and modulates visually evoked activity at temporal intervals and brain regions known to be correlated with visual awareness. Through which mechanisms does noradrenaline help sensory processing? Its presence may help signals to propagate more effectively between cortical regions. To what extent the effects on perception and sensory activity are specific for noradrenaline or perhaps overlap with other neuromodulatory systems is an important and interesting topic for future research. What determines sensory awareness has implications for many research fields ranging from sensory physiology through neuromodulation to attention, sleep and anesthesia, consciousness research and neuropsychiatric disorders. Our study shows that noradrenaline has a key role in the perception of external sensory events.